I've been making macros for creatives and companies for a good little while now, and I've had to learn a lot about expressions. You use expressions all the way from linking controls together to making them do complex animations. You can do quite a lot. So I bet there's a lot of things you don't know about expressions for DaVinci Resolve. As an example, did you know you can actually add expressions as modifiers to make it even more powerful? After adding it, you can see a bunch of controls over here that allow you to do a lot more complex things really easily because you can also add expressions here or here to do different things. And if you ever tried to use expressions in the past, you can know that these boxes are way too small. So by adding this modifier, you already expand out the box quite a bit, but even that may be too small for you. So maybe easier just to copy out the text and do it in a text editor like Notepad. But did you know you can actually run Lua code in expressions? If you add a colon to the start of an expression, you can actually start writing in Lua code. Since expressions are already kind of a really compact Lua language, it doesn't take a lot for it to expand out to the broader Lua language. And you can actually use quite a lot of Fusion API specific functions. Not everything works though. So a lot of the things that you can get information work. The functions that do things in the comp don't work. A great example of a recent tool that actually did this is Magic Animate V3. Alex really did actually take a lot of learning from his previous tools and learning in the back end that he didn't really share a lot of and really made this tool as cool as possible. And I'm gonna share a few of his little secrets here. To convert his macro into a group, we can actually see the nodes inside, which help us, because that allows us to see some cool stuff he did for the animations. So if we look in Fusion, by default, it's just his macro. If we get rid of that, we can add it back as a group. Now, if we look closely, we have anim groups over here where he actually stores where the animations happen. And if we go into spins and modifiers, we can see he has expressions that have Lua code, but he's still incorporating some of that basic stuff because sometimes it's easiest to just use the basic Lua expressions. With the ability to execute Lua in expressions, we can also execute a text box as code in the same similar way we can do with a button. We can come into here and actually write in do string. We actually don't need the specific Lua execution call right here because we are already calling a function that knows it's going to be using Lua. So we would just then write in just whatever the control name is in the node. So we just have this on the transform node. So trans, transform one and then dot, and we just called ours my expression. So we have the name, we have the node. We just have to then type in a dot value to get the text inside of the control. If we don't have this on here, it's just getting the control itself as like an object, which doesn't actually get us the value. And just like that, we can put in Lua code in here that returns a number and it can give us an expression. That's gonna call it for the expressions today. Check out a video next week coming out that's gonna be a lot bigger. I actually had to record this last minute because I was sick. So thank you for sticking with me. I have a big video coming out on next week's Thursday or Friday, depending on whenever I can actually get it done. And I'll see you then with a new tool. All right, I'll see you there. Happy animating and scripting. See ya.